Oh, hello. Oh, you must be rolling. James told me about you. And you're back. Huh? I'm not here to loot anything, if that's what you're wondering. I can see your pupils dilating, you filthy liar! Oh yeah, we've got seven full books on polygraph machines alone. I may not be able to jack off, but I am smarter than you. Oh yeah. Then you would know that polygraphs are complete bullshit. Anyway, I'm here to cheer curiosity. I'm not interested in looting this place. Oh, I can see your little gelatinous eyeballs darting around the room. I see you looking at all my stuff. That plant? Mine. That painting? Mine. That jukebox? Wanna guess? Yours are mine. Er, uh, time up! It's mine! Well, okay, I do loot things, but not those things. I took a bullet to the head, okay? I'm trying to be better. Oh, it's not my fault. I took a bullet to the head. Wah, boo-hoo! I swear, if I had a nickel for every damn drifter and vagabond that used that excuse on me. Has that happened before? And if I was really here to ransack this place, what would it be to you anyway? Well, <laughs> my cohorts in here might go, beep boop, put that back, silly human. But you know, if you want to cross an unhappy metal automaton with metal claws and lasers built into his face, well, you be my guest. Well, whatever I do, be assured I'll leave that ugly hat where it is on the remains of your lost dignity. Well, goddamn, I just got served. I can hear the two remaining neurons in your head bouncing off each other to come up with that line. Hey, it only took me two. How much would it take you? <sighs> I'm not going to say anything more about this. Okay, alright. Well, what else would you like to talk about? Maybe we could talk about how you're probably going to starve to death. Did you know that if you don't eat, the human body begins to consume its own muscle and tissue after a week or two? You'd probably eat your own shit after that point. <laughs> Pretty interesting read. There's plenty of ways for both of us to die that aren't starving. You know what? Fuck you. Fine. You're absolutely right about me. I'm here to scavenge. Now move, Toaster. I have a backpack to fill. Alright, I see how it is. Well, here's your room key, ma'am. We have all-night room service, an Olympic-sized swimming pool, and dog-sized cockroaches. Enjoy your stay. Sounds like a dream. Back again. Why are you so obnoxious? Well, it's not my fault. I had abusive parents and they, uh, used to hit me. Uh-huh. You know, Prim Slim, is that you? Prim who now? Well, there's a robot outside in Prim, which looks just like you. A wreck with a cowboy hat and shoes. Prim Slim at your service. Authentic cowpoke and official spokespot of the Vicky and Vans Casino and Museum. Yeehaw! Oh, we all look the same to you. Is that it, you racist motherfucker? Yeah, I thought so. What? <laughs> well, we look more different than Asians, at least. Uh-oh. I didn't say that. Wow. Not cool. Is there a reason why you're the only one with such a unique flair? Look, you just mind your own goddamn business and go back to inhaling all the oxygen and jerking off to whatever you filthy animals do, okay? <sighs> James told me you were the go-to guy if I wanted some special books. <laughs> oh, right. That's me, all right. The go-to guy for the... Special books right here. Good old Roland. So where can I find some issues of guns and bullets, or...? Oh, I don't know. It's a goddamn library. You want you to look around, asshole? Isn't hiding books against the whole purpose of this library? You know, believe it or not, I used to actually care about this place. Oh, yeah. It was my sole purpose in this existence, after all. So, when I see a bunch of reckless Neanderthals utilizing these books for the most distasteful of purposes, as well as wearing them out before any future generations can enjoy them, I decided it was best to put them away for safekeeping. Sue me. Oh, were the previous guests being unruly? 
You don't seem to think much of James, why? Huh? Oh, well. When did you take an interest in the interpersonal politics of a bunch of soulless machines, huh? <sighs> okay, enough for now. Goodbye, Roland. Come back soon. No, thank you. <sighs> Fucker. I have no voice module and must process my dread. Okay, that's a good one. There's a ledger here. Room 4, Piper slash face. Room 3, Darren and Dreddy. Room 6, Cecilia Parsons. Room 5, Dexter Aldrich. Roger Erickson. Room 2, Skin Cancer. I get the feeling this isn't their actual names for some of them. Ugh, another printing card. <sighs> I guess I better go check my room eventually. Beyond the Pleasure Principle, Sigmund Freud. Dealing with the loss of a loved one. An introduction to taxidermy. These two books being side by side imply something very bad. <sighs> oh, people are playing cards. Oh, another log. The Book of Fellowship. Batlin. Okay. That might be a good one. I've got the first three of those audio logs. Might as well listen to them. One thing is for sure, we are leaving tomorrow. Our stay here has been utterly pointless, and Knight Roger hasn't been the most helpful auxiliary. It is rather safe to say that his main preoccupations were playing the pool table and stuffing himself with pre-war food. Oh, some of the previous residents were Brotherhood. Aldrich here. It's about time I found something relevant to- <gasps> Roger, stop frightening me like that! What is it now? Wait. You smell like cigarettes. Did you actually smoke inside the library? Are you crazy? What do you think will happen to us if those monomaniacal contraptions notice one of us is smoking in a library? Well, I don't know either. And I don't want to know. So get your <laughs> out of a shower and get rid of that filthy smell before I catch you. If their maker gave them something as useless as a personality, I wouldn't be surprised if they're also equipped with some sort of sniffing module. And even if they aren't, you really stink. So chop chop, shower. <laughs> he must have been really scared of these robots to not do what the Brotherhood often does and just take stuff. How the f am I supposed to get senior scribes to keep testing me with the aimless investigations in the most remote corners of the Mojave? And with Knight Erickson on top of that. But I have good hope. I will find something actually useful down here. Finding this place is just my luck, and the perfect opportunity to shine. Hmm, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> Nothing must have come of that. Maybe the Brotherhood was forced into hiding not long after. Okay, well, better check the rooms and the bathroom. Interesting. A hole in the wall, A. Orozco. Okay. Well, better take a look at the rooms. Ooh, this is nice. Literally the most gorgeous vault I've ever seen. <sighs> Makes sense since it was a bunch of rich people who got together and made it. At least it seems to have actually been for a good purpose. Oh, whoa. This must be some surplus.
Ah, that one's locked up. And two. Okay. And six. And seven. Where's room four? That's the one I got the key to. And five. Ah, uh, there we go. Oh, of course he gave me this room. It's a mess in here. Well, eh, it's okay. I can deal with it. Not that big a deal. Ah, oh, someone must have been trying to tinker their own ammo in here. Hello, Roland. <laughs> Back for more? We can do this all day. <sighs> the room you just gave me, did you use it as a dump? <gasps> a dump? That's our executive suite! I'm sorry you're not pleased with the accommodations. Uh-huh, sure. Who lived there? A pack of rabid mole rats? Just as if, my good woman. We put a lovely woman named Piper in there. Who's Piper? Oh, well, she's uh, one of our lovely guests that consumed almost all of the remaining food supplies and defecates in toilets that don't even flush anymore. Which I can all smell, by the way! Oh, so you do have a sniffy module. But normally when people provide rooms, they clean them first. The toilet is clogged, the bed isn't done, and there's hair on the sheets. Oh, maid. Maid? This lady's toilet is clogged. Oh, that's right. She's dead. There isn't a maid. I know that. Whatever. I've slept in the wasteland. I just thought in such a beautiful place I could actually get a beautiful room. You know I have the means to get myself a decent room, whether you agree or not. Well, all right, buddy. I've been clearly outplayed. You go use your crude little lockpicking device, human, and see what it gets you. I will. I'm shocked. Shocked! You of all people are a quitter. Ugh, whatever. So tell me about this Piper fellow. Oh, well, she's uh, one of our lovely guests that consumed almost all of the remaining food supplies and defecates in toilets that don't even flush anymore. Which I can all smell, by the way! You told me this. Any more details? In detail? Rather tall, one hand with three fingers, cool eye patch, dirty as hell, spoke loudly, snored louder, spilled blood all over the place. <laughs> it took a whole six months to get better. Scolded our master about some obscure shit and I couldn't care less about it and it finally went away. Hmm, maybe she was a raider or prospector? Spilled blood all over the place? You know, I read how the typical adult human body contains five to six liters of blood, but... It doesn't really register until you see so much of it pulled out on the ground in front of you. It took 4.7 hours for our maintenance boss to scrub it all away. What a mess. Luckily, Helena took that bloody disaster to the infirmary before it spread to the Persian rug. You didn't even have to clean it. <laughs> what are your priorities? Did Piper and your master have some sort of disagreement? Shit, man, are you going to play detective all night here? What does it matter anymore? Yes, they did, and no, I didn't know what it was all about. <sighs> okay, well, she was here for six months? Yeah, well, she was all messed up. Your organics take forever to kind of heal back to some kind of semblance of a working order. Even then, you're never 100% again. I'm glad I'm not one of you. Anyways, why don't you go ask Helena? She'll elaborate more on this. Jeez. Well, joke's on you. I'm over half cyborg anyway. <sighs> I do have other questions. Well, since we're besties now, I could try, but honestly, eh. All right, I'll give it a shot. Try me. Mm-hmm. You know what? Forget it. Bye. Come back soon. Mm-hmm. And deal with your lovely sarcasm. All right, I'm going to try these other rooms.
Yeah, this was four. And this is five. Oh, looks like the key I got. Oh, this was Dexter's room. I found this key in the diner. There's another log. But I'm missing number four. Very sparse living in here. Dexter definitely didn't want to stay long. Ugh, there's no way to get into this one. Or this one. I could probably do this one. Okay, I managed it. Wait, why are there crates of Sunset Sarsaparilla in here? Oh, they have money in them. That is so weird. Oh, another printing card. That's good. I don't think this room was actively in use for a long time. Let me check any other rooms. Oh, this one I could do. A lot easier than that other room. Okay. And it's really nice, too. It's got its own bookshelf and desk and bed and no crap everywhere. I could probably get into this one too. There we go. Oh. People left magazines and stuff. And some armor? That's interesting. Healing powder. Hmm. That's suspicious. Oh, raider armor. And lots of drugs. <laughs> that makes sense. Another printing card. Must have been a raider that stayed in here. Maybe they read and got educated. Well, that's all the rooms I can get into. Roland? Back for more? Remember, I don't need to sleep. I can do this all day. Do you have some kind of problem with me? It's nothing personal. You're just ugly, that's all. And I can smell your sphincter. I am a gorgeous cyborg android woman and... It... <sighs> okay, what was the deal with those Dexter and Roger guys? Yeah, exactly. What is the deal about them? Uh, can you tell me? Yes. Where was their room? No. Okay, where's the key to their room? No. Did they leave some holotape somewhere? Huh? What was that? My hearing's getting a little fuzzy in my old day. Uh, try again? <sighs> Did they leave some holotape somewhere? No. I hate you. Forget it. Uh, Alright. Wait, forget what now? Why don't you let James in their living quarters? Why don't I? Because James has to learn how to let it go, buddy. Get busy living or get busy dying is one of my favorite movies used to say. You know, movies. Ugh, never mind. That's not an answer. That's all you have to say? Oh, I have plenty to say. Just not about that. Okay, I'm done. Bye. Come back soon. 
That has got to be the most aggravating Patek Chan I have ever encountered. And that's saying something. Ooh, they have upper balconies. That's nice. What's back here? Oh, that just leads down again. The clinic is apparently this way. What's this? Ah, damn. Locked up tight. Can't get in. And this is the other balcony. It's really pretty in here. Oh, this must be the classroom. It's a hollow tape. Oh, that's the fourth audio log. I can't believe this toaster has the nerve to deny us access to the living quarters on the sole ground that Roger lost both of our <laughs> keys. We tried to sleep in the movie theater, but Erickson has grown so disgustingly fat from his constant binge eating that he snores when he sleeps. Even after I kicked him onto the ground. So I left him there and tried to sleep on the couch in the lounge. But as soon as I fell asleep, that toaster, Roland, began to walk across the room. Singing this stupid song praising his useless spurs that dingle dangle or whatever the they do. <laughs> so here I am, crawling under a desk in the classroom, trying to set a makeshift bed for me to cry myself to sleep. Yet, I'm wide awake and trying to calm the f down by recounting these events on a holotape. As you can hear, it works perfectly! <laughs> okay, this texter guy is awful. It is actually funny to hear Roland messing with them, especially with that song. How the old world managed to waste so many resources on vapid enterprises is beyond me. What is the point of keeping a record on all these useless topics? This isn't a library. It's a graveyard for pointless knowledge. Give me a year, and I'll sort out the hundred, no, say, fifty books worth keeping. While we cremate the rest, and make room for a new chapter. The stupidity of these pre-war novels, in particular, are just too much for me to endure. I am still waiting for their database. What was the name of this wretched thing already? Arthur? to come up with actually valuable information. Oh crap, he really just wanted to destroy this place. Because, oh, not all the knowledge here is useful for military. Fuck you. Good novels are fun no matter what. Ugh, these terminals still aren't responding. Nutritious Virtues of Creamed Corn, M. Robertson. Oh, wow, I've only ever had canned cream corn. This is interesting. Oh, here's the clinic. Helena must be in here. They keep talking about her. Oh, hello. How may I help you? Well, what kind of help do you provide? I am programmed to treat a wide array of human traumas. Do you need treatment? Oh, this one? Nah, I figured I would continue soaking your carpet with my blood if that's okay with you. It seems you were wounded. Please lay down and stay still for a moment. I'll take care of your wounds. Okay. Here you go. 
Well, thank you. <laughs> but that's not the only thing. Pool, toilet, pond, river, tap, you name it, I drink it. I'm radical like that. A little too rad. Well, in that case, let's have this Radaway injection here. And your vein can't miss it. There you are, completely flushed out. <sighs> Thank you very much. Sorry, I think some of Roland's snark is rubbing off on me. I have questions about you and your robotic fellows. Is this about us in general, or about one of us specifically? All of you in general. Well, we abide to our programming, which is restrictive for some parts, and very permissive for others. Besides our ability to emulate most human emotions, our main difference with traditional personality simulations is that we can learn and evolve. Evolve? And how do you do that? By questioning what we have learned. Daily, we process all newly acquired information and compare it with our current knowledge. We analyse, appraise and question what we know and use it to build a new perspective. Although the learning process is very intuitive to humans, it is an incredibly complex process to AI like us. We have to prioritise and value every new lesson, every new idea, every new concept through careful examination and confrontation. A good analogy is the one of a crippled, learning to walk with synthetic legs. In the same manner, we learn how to think with the synthetic brain. Oh, okay, that sounds like everyone else, but it's a bit more conscious for you and harder as a result. How is your programming restrictive? Besides the fact that we have to enforce our basic protocols, namely to protect humans, protect the library, protect ourselves, we are restricted in our behaviours by preset personalities. For example, my own neurocomputational matrix is programmed to be supportive, helpful, and comforting. When Roland, for another example, is programmed to be obnoxious, disobedient, and provocative. Hmm, yeah. Uh, why did your master program you that way? He never told us why he did so. But when we talk about it among ourselves, it is rather clear that he made us so he wouldn't feel so lonely. To this day, I still ask myself if we succeeded. Oh, I'm sure you did. Um, what happens when two of your protocols contradict each other? It's something our master called a grey area in our program. This occurrence arose once when we had to defend ourselves from a gang of slavers. They were a threat to the library, but they also were humans. Repelling them without any casualties wasn't possible. We were stuck in some kind of loop, unable to react appropriately. Our master was the one to provide the solution by directly ordering us to bypass all protocols, defend the library, and kill the invaders. Huh. Yeah, that's a mess of contradictions. I get his reasoning, but did he basically make you follow his orders above all else, or did he make you prioritize protecting the library? Hmm. You mentioned emotions. Does that mean you're almost human? Almost human is still far away from the real deal. The only goal of these programmed emotions is to give more verisimilitude to our interactions with humans. Nothing more. Acting like we feel something is not feeling. I can recite a poem with proper tone and rhythm, but not understand its emotional significance. Perhaps that's the problem with the Turing test. Are you actually conscious? I think if we get to the point where you can't tell, then you might as well be. You know, beyond those three protocols you mentioned, any hidden one? AI programmers love their little paradoxes. I know what you're talking about. Wasn't it a great book? And no, there's no zeroth law or protocol in our program. Well, as far as I know. Oh god, I hate thinking about this. Anyway, 
The only thing that can make us bypass our protocols is a direct order from our master. Uh, yeah, yeah, I remember reading it when I was in the TSC. Look, I'm just gonna take one book, I'm the commander. But that's interesting. So yeah, apparently an order from the professor supersedes your directives. But his order basically was to prioritize defending the library. You've been very helpful. Can we talk about another topic? Yes. Um, about James. May I ask you something? Ah, James. Isn't he a sweet fellow? You tell me. What's with his weird questions? He couldn't resist, could he? I told him this would make our guests uneasy. Shortly put, he is programmed to ask all kinds of questions, to be curious of the outside world and people. Because of this, our master decided he would be the first to talk to new guests. He's the one managing this vault's relation with the outside. Well, he's very diligent when it comes to the library's safety. Is he some kind of leader for you all? For some matters, yes. Even if we all have our field of authority. As for the library, since we have limited resources to ensure its perpetuation, he is the one to make long-term decisions. Well, if he's so curious of the outside people and world, why doesn't he go out himself? We can't go out. That would leave this place unattended, and we all have a role to fulfill here. Besides, what's a few Protectron out there if not easy pickings for scavengers? Eh, yeah, ideally you'd have some type of security. Does he have some kind of morbid curiosity about death and murder? We are all programmed to try and understand what we can't grasp. For us, intuitive concepts like dreams, sensations, or feelings are elusive. There's a chasm between humans and us. And despite the odds, we have to work every day to find a way to cross it. That's how we are made. We are constantly chasing concepts that escape us. You all are definitely more introspective than robots I've met in the past. I guess some robots, just like some people, don't really reflect on the nature of their consciousness. It must be hard to recognize your own limitations like that. Can we talk about something else? Yes. Um, I'd like to know some things about Arthur. Arthur is... different. He is probably the one of us I can least relate to. He doesn't like to converse with us and spends all his time compiling and organizing the data our master left him. If he's supposed to manage your databases, why did your master bother giving him a personality? Arthur, as far as his personality mind frame is concerned, is a total mystery to us. We don't even know why our master gave him one. There is one thing that struck me, though. Our master sometimes called him Johnson by mistake. Oh, each of you must be based off of one of the academics that was supposed to be here when the bombs fell. Why isn't Arthur capable of giving straight answers? Did your master make it so? You're correct. Our master told us there was a reason why he programmed Arthur this way, but never bothered to tell us. <laughs> it's probably because that's what Johnson was like. Is being a talking database all what Arthur's about? Yes. His memory should contain every book in the library by now. If anything should happen to them, Arthur would be able to print replacements. He is also in charge of monitoring our maintenance bots and dealing with the vault's technical functions. Oh, okay. Is there any way for me to make him answer my questions? Yes, there is a simple trick. He only answers open-ended questions. Oh, right, yeah, I figured that out. Hmm, Arthur must have been the one to do the maintenance spot graveyard outside. Well, let's put Arthur aside for now. I want to talk about something else. Yes? Could we talk about you? Oh, I assure you there is nothing much to know about me. I examine, I treat, I stitch. When I'm not, I try to develop my psychoanalytical skills. 
Which is quite difficult. Are you that good with the scalpel? I might be in need of your services in the near future. I treated quite my share of traumas during the last decades. Most of the time, our guests arrive in need of medical attention. Yeah, that's the wasteland. Let me be a little skeptical when a robot tells me about its psychological skills. I'm hearing you. To be truthful, I shed the same skepticism, if only to a certain extent, though I doubt my own skills. I have reason to think that the machines will ultimately be able to provide this kind of service to humans. Let me take the surgery machine, for instance. It doesn't understand what it does, but it can heal human bodies all the same. In the same manner, machines with no conceptual comprehension of the human mind might provide some of the support it needs. Yeah, okay. A painting can make someone feel without necessarily feeling itself, although I do think you feel. Why don't you tell me about your difficulties in the shrinking department? It's frustrating. Having all this theoretical knowledge of human psyche without any personal experience of human feelings and internal conflicts. It's like having a blindfold, preventing me from seeing something I've been touching for decades. Well, good luck with that, I suppose. I'll help in any way I can, if possible. You're kind. I might take you up on your offer sometime. Sure. Um, enough about you for now. Do you wish to talk about something else? I may have some other questions about you guys in the future. In the meantime? Yes? We'll talk later. Anytime. Oh, look! She has a little dino toy in a cage. Oh, she has a nice infirmary and a printing card. Okay, good. Oh yeah, that's probably an auto dock. This is an ancient and very obsolete Mark I auto dock. Despite the similarities in appearance to more advanced models, it shares no compatible parts. Hmm, interesting. Very old model. Oh, this must be like the rec room. Has a bunch of balls and pool tables and a jukebox. Nice. And this goes back into the diner. I should go talk to James now that I've met everyone. Hello. So, how may I help you? Remind me, what's the deal with that Brotherhood duo and their holotapes? Yes. Give me something. Roland should know which room those two were occupying. There might be something there. A note or a recording on what they thought about this place. Well, why don't you investigate it yourself? We, uh, I don't know how to put this. We, uh, lost both keys to their room. So maybe there's something in it. Maybe not. I have no way to be sure. My siblings told me I was overacting when I suggested blowing up the doors to get inside. Yeah. Besides, Roland has the final word when it comes to the living quarters. You can probably guess what his answer was. Ugh, yeah, it's Roland. <laughs> Why are you assuming they left something behind? Because they did. Dexter liked to record his observations at the first opportunity. It is something we strongly encourage our guests to do. And to share with us 
for several reasons. We didn't expect that he would record so many, though. Worst thing is, he left them scattered all over the place. No, wait. The real worst thing was that there wasn't any relevant information on these. Uh, yeah, but is this really that important for you to know what these strangers thought of the library? Yeah, it's a big deal. We had to deal with some rough situations in the past. We are trying to learn from our mistakes. It's pretty important for me. For us. To know how outside people perceive this place. And what they intend to do with what they learned here. I mean, I guess that's fair. What kind of rough situation? We once received a visit from a group of slavers. They had been tipped off by one of our previous guests, who told them that there was food and shelter here. Things got quickly out of hand. We had to drive them off. Violently. We had to seal this place off for a few months. The time to let things blow off. Calm down. Oh, it was probably that raider. Did you say there was something in it for me? Ah, compensation. Well, there are some popular books we try to keep out of everyone's hands, mainly because their main appeal is military knowledge. And it's something we're so fond of promoting. We could print you copies if you wish. Oh, that would be helpful. I appreciate that. Don't you have anything else to give? Like bottle caps? Caps? Are you kind of joking? We have caps lying around somewhere upstairs, but we can't give you trash as a reward. What will people say? Oh, no, they... Okay, never mind. Uh, I found nothing conclusive yet, but I'm on it. Good. Come back when you've found something. All right, I'll be back. See you around. I'm gonna try to talk to Helena again. Hello. How may I help you? Well, I have some questions about some of your previous guests. I will help you as much as I can, as long as you don't ask me to breach medical confidentiality. Okay, fine. What was the deal with Piper? Strong character. Piper had seen many things and lived a whole lot of experiences outside. Survived the Holocaust, too. Oh, she must have been a guest early on. Is there a reason why Roland gave me Piper's old room? I don't know. For now, I don't know enough about you to draw any parallel between the two of you. Ask me when we know each other a little better. Okay, well, let's not get sidetracked. There are other things I wish to know about Roland. And they are? Was your master some kind of masochist to program a robot to be that obnoxious? A little bit, yes. Our master needed to stay focused. Even if we each provided a form of stimulation, we were more or less yes men to him. He needed something to push him out of his boundaries from time to time. So to keep his fighting spirit alive, he programmed Roland. And as for why he allowed Roland to be offensive to our guests, I suppose he thought that it was critical for our guests to have at least a modicum of patience or self-derision. I guess that's true. Give them some humility. <sighs> to be honest, he's giving me a hard time. Any advice on how to handle him? Hmm. Please keep in mind that whatever you tell him, he will use it at the first occasion to irritate you. He's both clever and persistent. That said... I remember two people that managed to avert his vigorous badgering. Well, that's excellent news. Who were they? As time went by, our master seemed more and more amused by Roland's provocations. In the end, every time Roland tried to taunt our master, he shrugged it off with a laugh. As for the other one, it was our first guest, Piper. Hmm, okay, thank you. What's with the cowboy hat and boots? Well, Roland forbids me to tell that story, but I'm not supposed to follow his orders anyway. It's a rather amusing story, to be honest. As you know, our master defined Roland to be offensive and irritating in great variety of ways. And there was one method which he was very proficient with. 
Impersonation. Seeing how we resemble each other physically, the only way our master could differentiate us at the time was our voice modules. Then one fine day, Roland discovered he could mimic both my and James's voices. He'd then pass up as one of us and act as if he was malfunctioning. For a time, our master bought it and went to great troubles trying to repair us, until he realized that Rollo was mocking him all along. So he put a cowboy hat and star on him so he could never fool him again. <laughs> Later, he decided to paint us all and give us some visual identity. Oh, okay, that's kind of funny. I hope you all didn't suffer from it, though. You know, interestingly enough, I found this Sheriff Star near the body of your master. I don't know if Roland would be glad to know you got it back. He hated this badge so much, he used to bump into walls, doors, bookshelves to make it fall. <laughs> don't mind me if you want to give it back to him. Oh, Okay, well, enough with Roland. We've dignified him with enough chatter already. I could tell you it gets better with time, but I would be lying. I mean, you've had 200 years of him, so yeah. Could I ask you something about James? Ah, James. Isn't he a sweet fellow? He asked me to find information on previous guests. Somehow it seems weird to me. Maybe he expects to know you better through this, and through you, learn about the world. Mm, maybe. Let's talk about something else. I what can you tell me about that scribe, Dexter Aldridge? I can't say I had much contact with him. First time I saw him, he simply glanced over the installations, then shrugged it off. The rest of his time was spent with books and research. If I'm not mistaken, he left some of his notes in the classroom. Okay, well, do you remember something about Roger Erickson? He was an agreeable man. I remember having nice conversations with him about varieties of subjects. He was very curious about us. He was nice enough to treat me like a person and sometimes like a lady. It's not that much the way he treated me that I found kind, but the intention behind it. On a more general observation, he seemed to want to make the best of his time here. Yeah, can't blame him. At least you know not everyone in the Brotherhood was a piece of shit. Now, to another topic. Of course. You know, there is a plastic dino in a cage on your desk. Something is obviously eluding me. Ah, it's a special something. I'm glad you asked. As a matter of fact, it's a symbol. Can you guess what it is supposed to represent? Well, dinos are extinct. The cage symbolizes the preservation of the past, just as this library. That interpretation holds a lot of meaningful information. It's a very nice answer. I like it. But the fact that you chose this interpretation is what's important. And that's precisely what the dino is for me. A way of knowing our guests. Are you sure it's nothing more? After all, it's you who chose to put these symbols on your desk. I am a machine. I will never understand symbols or interpret their meanings on my own. But I know humans can. But surely you're not just here to talk about our plastic friend. How can I help you? I... Did find this old, broken syringe near the body of your master. Near the body of our master? Where exactly? Under one of the fallen books around him. It is dusty. It has been there probably for a long time. Yeah, I can barely read that it contains some medics. Did you know your master took medics? No, never. I never saw him using MedX. He didn't show any signs of regular usage either. Maybe it was a recent thing? It's got some peculiar cracks on it, as if something crushed it in the middle. Yes, it's curious. It reminds me of the first syringes that I broke. It was a time when I wasn't fully calibrated for medical treatment, and broke every fragile object I handled. Care to elaborate? As protectrons, 
Our bodies are not fit for certain operations. Our movements and physical activities too had to be recalibrated for our daily tasks. In short, unless programmed so, we are clumsy when we aren't doing what we are manufactured for. So you're saying one of you bots broke the syringe? Probably, yes. But why would anyone steal Medex and administer it to our master? Maybe in hope of easing the pain at his time of death? That means that either the killer didn't wish our master to suffer, or that someone found our master before he died and tried to ease his suffering. Why would they not tell you, then? You know, killer or not, whoever broke the syringe must know something critical about your master's death. It's very likely. If you have any more questions about this, don't hesitate to ask me. Well, thanks for the information. Don't mention it. We'll talk later. Anytime. Hmm, that syringe implies it was one of the Protectrons that did it. And the badge implies it was Roland. It could have been an accident. Maybe he bumped into the bookcase to get rid of the badge and it just fell over. And then maybe he tried to cover it up with the medics? Eh, <sighs> I don't know. Alright, I should probably talk to James again. Hey! So, how may I help you? I found this recording in Dexter's room. I have to warn you, it's probably not what you expected. Oh, great. I can't wait to know what... Uh... <sighs> oh, dear. I don't need much time to digest this. Well, do you need help with something else? Yes, but hey, I didn't forget your reward. Please, take this. You can cash in in the study room. It's the little room where our master sleeps. Come back and tell me when you want to give me a hand with another guest. Thanks.